the truth the girls. Hi everyone. There's a saying, never sleep with someone you wouldn't want to be. With the idea being that when you sleep with this person, you're exchanging energy with your chakras and you could take on their aura. But could you be possibly absorbing something more than just aura and energies? Maybe DNA? It's been discovered that some women carry Y chromosome gene sequences in their bodies, such as in their blood. Where did these come from? Well, it's been known for some time that when a woman carries a baby, she gives the baby her cells, but the baby also gives her some of his or her cells. Um, it's easier to track that through male cells with Y chromosomes, which are not supposed to be in the mother's body. So it's been found that a male baby will give its mom some of its cells, but then there are some women who've never had a male baby who still carry these Y chromosome gene sequences in their body. So where did they get them from? Well, that, that was the question asked in this study, male microchimerism in women without sons. Now, I don't know if it's chimerism or chimerism, but I know that it means that you become like a mosaic, a DNA wise or cell wise, that you have your own cells with your own DNA and then some parts of you are, are foreign. So you're like a chimera, that I know how to pronounce, uh, a mix of like two beings. I myself have a male child, so I'm probably a chimera, even though I know I don't look like one now, but you should see me in the morning. I haven't had my coffee yet. Don't even talk to me. They looked at women who had either only daughters, had had miscarriages, had had abortions, or had had no children at all. The, the highest rate of microchimerism or chimerism was in women who had had abortions, which shows that even if you terminate the pregnancy early, there still has been a transfer of cells to the mother, or there could be. Uh, but oddly enough, the ones who had never had any pregnancies, uh, still in that group it was 10%. Um, yeah, 10% of women who had never carried a child whatsoever still carried some male cells and DNA in their body. So where did they get it from? Well, one possibility is that the woman's mother had previously had a son and so she absorbed some of his cells, his DNA, and then passed this on to her daughter. Another possibility could be that she had been pregnant sometime and just didn't know it. The third possibility which they mention is that it could be from sexual intercourse. Maybe women absorb some of this, uh, these cells and DNA from their male partners and then carry them. Now, if that's the case, you, you would really want to be careful. Never sleep with a slob, a depressed person, a negative person, a person who doesn't recycle, a person who doesn't respect animals. You could sleep with some loser and absorb his cells, and next thing you know, you're a loser too. I slept with a guy who was a non-vegetarian, and pretty soon I started craving steak. But it's not proven. Although there is one other thing that makes me think that it is, it's possible. DNA from sperm of ex-partners lingers on in female flies and influences the genetics of her offspring. Well, it turns out that in fruit flies, the offspring can carry s some of the traits inherited from not their father, but the female's former partner. The previous partner's DNA gets into the female's immature eggs and that's how it's transferred to her future offspring with another partner. So far in humans, they're only looking in the blood. They're not looking at the immature egg cells and ovaries. So we have no idea if this happens in people. They say here, this is what is called a uh, telogeny, a previous mates influencing a woman's offspring, which has been around for centuries. It was first proposed by the Greek philosopher Aristotle and accepted as science until the early 1900s when it was disproved and replaced by modern genetic theory. But this study suggests the theory may have some elements of truth, for flies at least. Well, that's right. Uh, these are fruit flies and, you know, we're not fruit flies, so this may not at all apply to us. Or it may. In any case, even if having sex won't in and of itself transfer your partner's characteristics to you, if you get pregnant and have his baby and then the baby transfers gene sequences to you, then for sure you're carrying around little pieces of your ex forever.
Now, one thing that occurred to me in reading all of this was that the Bible says that when a man and woman uh, get married, uh, that they become one flesh. And I always just figured that this was like a metaphor for, you know, the physical interlocking of their parts. But, you know, maybe it's possible that they exchange G DNA, genes or whatever. I mean, there's so much we don't know. And often enough, it turns out that the Bible knows more than we think it does. Such as, for example, it turns out that the world is, after all, flat. So I just thought this was interesting and something to keep in mind. Uh, let me know what you think. And thanks for giving me a thumbs up. Thanks for listening to me. And I'll see you next time. Bye.